Well, I gotta take a quick break from painting. This is Arizona, and the days are getting real toasty. And unlike when we were cruising, uh, I can't just work for a while and hop in the water and cool off a bit and then hop back on. So I've got to get some shade put up so that I can work. So I went out and picked up a big tarp to go over the mast and uh, down the sides. Now, I picked up an aluminized one. What I learned when we were cruising is all shade is not created equal. We have a hunter green bimini that sits right at the top of our uh, of our boom gallows to the to the Dodger, and that's all well and good, and it looks great. However, what I found out was, unless you use something that's reflective, sitting underneath that green in the hot sun, it keeps the sun off you, but sitting underneath it is like sticking your head in an oven with a with the broiler turned on. So we wound up with two awnings for the tropics, and. I'm a firm believer in it. What happens is that top awning keeps the sun off the second one. And the second awning, being lower, keeps a good, nice breeze going through the boat. So if you're heading to the tropics and you don't have a good reflective one up there with insulation in it, think about two awnings. It will make your life immensely better. So before I uh, put the tarp on, I realize I've got two 20 watt solar panels sitting up there and in order to keep them from pumping out or order to keep them pumping out juice they can't be under the tarp so I've got to reposition them first so in order to reposition the two solar panels I had some old PVC tubing at home that I was sort of in, almost in a scrap pile, almost threw it away. What I did was nip this down so that the solar panels the long way fit right on top of here. And what I'm gonna do is just untie them from there, tie them onto here, and slide this forward almost, well, right up to the bow pulpit. And that will keep them out of the shade because I really want the shade from here back. I wanna be able to get to the, uh, the Greg box on top the storage area there and things like that so we just move them up forward okay so here it is it's not great but it'll do uh, you know if we were having any kind of major windstorm I might be worried but uh, it should be okay for now they keep pumping out uh, I'm getting enough power from them to keep my power tools running batteries topped up so even with the shade part of the day on one part of the day on the other by the way this line I'm using to tie them up with it's just a clothesline from a big uh, big home store I find that it works really great it lasts quite a while in the Sun uh, and it's cheap enough I don't mind tying a little bit once I'm done with it, I can throw it away. It's not a big deal. So now, time to put up the tarp. Well, tarp's up. That ought to lower the temperature inside by a good 10 degrees. If you haven't put up a tarp before, the trick to making them last as long as you can is to keep them as tight as you can. And if you're on a boat and you don't have a ton of bungees, I'd advise you to grab some because they come in handy for all kind of things, from itty bitty ones to great big ones. Now that it's a better temperature, I can get started doing more below. Well, finally, I'm going to get to do some painting. But before I paint, I'm going to tape off. Last time I did, didn't tape very well, and I got a little bit of over, over paint. I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen this time. I'm going to tape off and uh, finally start getting some coatings down on, on here.
When I was in the military, uh, I used to paint aircraft a lot of times. And what I tried to do as a goal is to tape and overlap the tape all the way around so that after I did the painting, I could grab the tape at one end and just take it all off all the way around without going piece by piece. So that's the objective. Oops. Okay. Time to take out a hundred screws and take these panels off, I think. Come out a lot nicer if I do that. Two pesos. I'm not real great at painting. I drip and dribble. So for this task, I'm going to paint the tops first. I'll lay down some of this down into the bilge area. Paint the tops first. If anything drips in, it'll be on this. Then I'll let that set up. However many coats I decide, let that set up. Then I'll paint the insides, do those coats. Again, with this on the where the bilge coat goes, and then the final coat will be the bilge coat. That way, if I drip anything now, it'll be covered up by the final thing at the bottom. You could go the opposite way, but I'm, you know, not that great. Okay, this is the first of three coats. I'm going to do the same number of coats down here as I did on the panels out in the yard. So I've been thinking, uh, I've been trying to get one video up per week, but uh, you know, posting videos of the next uh, next two coats and some of the other minor things that I'm doing, sort of exciting is watching paint dry. 
pun intended. Uh, so it may be a few weeks before I get another video up. And I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be yet. If anybody has a request about something, let me know. And uh, I'll do a video of it if I'm doing it and uh, I have any knowledge that might help people. But other than that, this is probably the last video for a few weeks at least until I, uh, until I get most of this painting done uh, inside the lockers and, and all the rest of it. So, absolutely thank you for persevering and watching these boring videos. And I hope maybe you get something out of it. I, uh, if, if we do anything exciting over the next uh, time, I will videotape and uh, put it up. But there's a good chance that I won't. There, uh, we got a lot of other hobbies and toys and things that we're working on, so and we're not planning on launching for a while. So, I'm going to go ahead and close out for now and uh, say goodbye. If you liked it, click below. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And I'll try not to inundate you with useless videos, just stuff that makes sense. See you next shot.